So the timbre of a musical instrument generally depends on the volume at which you're playing it. And for the saxophone, this is particularly true. So at low volumes, the motion of the reed is almost perfectly simple harmonic motion. It's just moving a little bit and is not closing off the mouthpiece completely. And so both that motion of the reed and the motion of the air in the tube of the saxophone, they're, they're pretty much sinusoidal and so you end up with a sound that is mostly, it's almost a pure tone, um, just a, a pure tone and maybe a couple of harmonics. Whereas if you're playing at loud volumes, so as the reed starts to oscillate more, well, it can oscillate more away from the mouthpiece than it can towards the mouthpiece because at some point it just hits the mouthpiece and closes off. And so this is actually what happens at higher volume levels, the reed, completely closes off the mouthpiece for part of each period. And then you get something which is very different from a sinusoidal time graph. And in terms of the spectrum, that means you get a lot more higher harmonics. And that leads to a richer tone and the tone that is more normally associated with a saxophone. So I'm gonna play a little bit at low volume and high volume so you can hear the difference. And then we'll have a look using Audacity at this time graph and spectra for those two different situations. Okay, so I'll start out at low volume and so I, I will not adjust the microphone. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go to high volume, so I'll turn down the microphone. Okay, so that was... Uh, that was much louder. I turned down the microphone, so it didn't sound probably quite uh, quite as much louder to you as it did to me. Um, so now what I want to do is, uh, is see what the sound spectra look like for both of those cases. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, we'll make a recording here, and I'll just start at a low volume and then go to a higher volume. All right. Okay, so now we can we can zoom in on different parts of that sound. Uh, so let's start with this low volume region, and we'll just see what the time graph looks like. Okay, so you see that. Uh, well, it's a little bit. Um, yeah. So you see, it's it's almost um, it's almost sinusoidal looking. Um, it's it's a little bit fuzzy uh, so you see and I think actually what that is is just the breath noise on top of the on top of the note and so uh, if I zoom in well let's just have a look at the the spectrum there um, right okay so this is this is probably all breath noise and so you see that in terms of the actual spectrum of the note you, you get uh, basically one big peak at the fundamental and then the second harmonic uh, that's that's down you know this is this is um, down by 20 decibels so that's a hundred times less um, less intensity in this in the second harmonic and, and so it's almost completely a, a pure tone okay and so now uh, let's let's just move along and we'll see what how this uh, time graph changes. Okay, we went down in volume again, 
and um, yeah, so there's that's an even cleaner, pure tone. Uh, let me just look at let, let's just look at that one for a second. Um, plot spectrum. Okay, so just less breath noise, and so yeah, again, a very very simple spectrum, and you can see it in the time graph. It looks very sinusoidal, and so now as I as I start playing louder. Okay, so now you see that the, the graph uh, starts looking less sinusoidal. So it's oscillating up more than it's oscillating down. And I think that ultimately has to do with the fact that the reed can move more away from the mouthpiece than it can um, towards the mouthpiece. Okay, and so this becomes more and more pronounced as we get louder. Okay, so let's go to uh, a relatively large volume. And then actually you see something really interesting which is that at some point during the oscillation, there's this very sharp drop off. And I think that has to do with the, the specific event where the reed is slapping against the mouthpiece. Okay, and so we can, we can continue going to higher and higher volume. And so that becomes basically more and more pronounced. Um, so you get this very, very um, complicated time graph for the for the lar louder uh, volumes with the saxophone, and so now if if we if we look at the spectrum, let's just go back out, and then we'll look again look at the spectrum for various times there uh, again starting uh, from when it's quiet, and so right so there you see almost completely um, the the pure tone with some breath noise, and then you you go um, higher here. And what do I do? Replot spectrum. Okay, so you're getting a couple more harmonics showing up, um, and that should look similar. So those are those are now growing, um, growing some more, and you're getting more coming in. And then as we get louder, then you start to see quite a few harmonics uh, coming coming in. And now they're getting more and more pronounced and we get even higher harmonics. And let's go to that one um, even more. And let's go all the way to um, all the way to this sound here. Okay, and then now you're, you're getting even um, these really high harmonics coming in. And so if you, yeah, if you have that sound like with a full volume saxophone, then it's a very rich spectrum of sounds and really I, yeah i don't know how many harmonics but you know 30 or 40 different harmonics are actually contributing to that sound